Hi, welcome to Trailers from Hell. I'm Ed Newmeyer, and I'm here to talk about a movie that influenced me a good deal uh, called Westworld, which I saw when it came out in 1973. It was directed by Michael Crichton. Um, it was uh, sort of a, a, the first time I ever saw a movie about robots and, and how they saw the world and what might happen. Uh, and, and I think later on that came back to haunt me when I wrote Robocop. MGM presents Westworld. I remember this first shot very well because it was like mirrored sunglasses and and this seemed very very like oh my goodness I, I could not imagine how what, what kind of a science fiction movie I was going to see here when I saw these these shots it's it's pretty spare now but they get away with it pretty well I think it reminds me a little bit of, of science fiction post Kubrick in the way it's played most of what we're learning here is about how this theme park that uh, they're going to to visit works. Obviously, this is a dry run or a test run for Jurassic Park many years later. What I found uh, when I watched it again was that it's really all about sort of uh, a place where adults can go to, uh, to either uh, shoot people or have sex. There's a shot of uh, Yul Brenner there where they're taking his face mask off. And this is what I mean by it being kind of influential because I, I can't imagine that Jim Cameron did not see this movie before he made the Terminator. Not only do you have this kind of robot android creature chasing you around, but he's rather relentless, and the whole movie kind of goes to that. Here we have our, our protagonist, played by Richard Benjamin, who's sort of the everyman nebbish, and uh, his pal who knows everything, uh, James Brolin. And, and, and he's really doing kind of Eastwood here, or maybe even uh, Christian Bale. Twisted lemon, very dry, please. Just give him whiskey. He's new in town. Many elements of the Delos Resort are potentially dangerous. That's part of the appeal. Go on. You say something, boy. Kill him. Your move. Yul Brenner is uh, reprising a role that he was known for in The Magnificent Seven, the gunfighter named Chris. Here it's known, the wardrobe is somewhat consistent, but here he is playing just a character known as the gunslinger. And so after, you know, sort of a little death and sex, things go wrong, as they you know they're going to. This is an interesting movie because it's sort of the first time you had the idea of a computer virus affecting things and having things go very wrong. And for me, one, one of the things that I was very intrigued by was, is the first movie that had some real digital imagery in it. The uh, point of view of Yul Brenner, the android, is shown here, and uh, I think it's the first time I ever remember seeing anything like that. Later on, Cameron has a version of that in The Terminator, and when we were doing RoboCop, we talked a lot about how the android would see things. Shut down. Shut down immediately. I guess this movie couldn't have been made if there wasn't such a place as Disneyland, a very Southern California and sort of movie-oriented experience in its inception. And, and this is probably where the baby boomer imagination takes Disneyland, which uh, is sort of that if we go to Disneyland and, and, and we have a lot of fun and we indulge in our fantasies, ultimately somewhere we're going to pay the price for it. I presume if they remake this movie, which they talk about from time to time, uh, you could probably set it as a reality show set in Las Vegas. Boy, do we have a vacation for you. For you. For you. For you. For you. For you.